So pop the lacrosse ball just under the side of your bum there. And then from there, we're going to just start to apply some weight onto it. So it sits just under the top of the, the top of the glute there. And you should find some pressure points that feel a little bit grotty. Once you find one of those, just open the knee out and then back up again. And we're just going to spend two minutes on each side. You don't know where it's done, do you, Bubs? And you can just kind of hunt around in here, try and find the bits that feel the worst, really. <laughs> For some of you, it might be higher up the glute, like as you come towards the back and work anywhere between the midline of your bum and the side of your bum. And just try and find the bits that feel the worst in there. Apply as much pressure as you feel you're able to. <laughs> Paul, are you being attacked there? <laughs> she's, just, she's just figured out where the ball is. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have it. Can't have it. You put another one somewhere. And just keep working through that so what we're trying to do is work or work through all the tissue we're thinking about just below the iliac like the waistband there just below the waistband all the way around this sort of area and onto the bum cheek a little bit but this sort of whole area here is kind of the playground that you're going to use to try and work on and just try and find the spots in there that feel feel tight and just try and spend some time in there if you feel find one that feels particularly bad try and take some more weight off the hands to get a little bit more weight down onto the ball and then just drop the knee out to the side and just keep going through that tissue there. You can even come down onto, onto the old elbow and get a little bit more pressure into it that way. Oh. All right, and then we'll swap onto the other side. And again, just positioning that ball, starting up, if you can find the sort of the bony part of the side of your bum, and then <laughs> starting from there, <laughs> and then just start to move around. And just nice and slow, and just think of like relaxing the muscle as you drop the knee down to the side, and then lifting it back up to kind of pull the tissue across the ball. And you might find breathing out whilst you're lowering the knee down really helps to relax onto a little bit more. How did everyone do with 17.1 today? Oh, that was a killer. <laughs> how did you how did you go about it? What scaling did you use? Um even a 10 kilogram dumbbell. And yep. other than that, everything, you know, onto the box. Oh, you've got a box now, don't you? Yeah. Ah, nice. So, but I, ca I capped out with about 11 burpee box jumps to go. Oh, no. <laughs> it's close, it's close. I, uh, I scaled a little bit more today. I was being nice to myself and uh, got it done in, in a reasonable time, which I was quite pleased with, but... Yeah, I think if I'd done it with box jump overs as well, I would have been a bit slower. It's quite good with those sort of open workouts that when you when you come to do them on the score sheet, they'll have like um, split times. So uh, for instance, with that workout, I think it was maybe like there was a split time every time you finished a set of the burpees, I think it was. That your, your judge would write down what split time you got through that section and then when you log your scores on the on the crossfit open website you put in your split times um and then where you got to at the time cap and it it then sort of ranks you more accordingly and i think the person who won it last time 
they you know they got the exact same score as someone else in terms of the time they finished it in but they were slightly ahead of them or they got a slightly quicker split for the last set of burpees okay so they have a slightly different sort of scoring system but it makes it a bit more nuanced than uh, than just like what time you got or if you got time capped or didn't And if some of you kind of like not found any particularly bad bits, try rolling a little bit more into the side of your the side of your hip. More than likely there's some grotty stuff in there. Keep going on this side. We've just got another 20 seconds to go. All right. So next up, we're gonna uh, hit up some of the other tissues that can sometimes limit us from getting into a good position in the squat um, and ones that present, prevent us getting into a good hip hinge with external rotation. So we're gonna attack some of the work on the quads. All right, so we're gonna focus on this one, more on the outside of the quad. Last week uh, with the stuff we were doing, we were focusing more on the supratella. Um, so just above the patella here um, on the inside, we're gonna focus more on the outside today. So it's gonna be more from the midpoint of the quad up the way rather than closer to the knee for this one. So to get into this one, we are gonna come onto our side into kind of a side plank position. From there, we're gonna place the ball just under the edge of the quad, okay? So about halfway up your leg. And from there, you're gonna roll across and you're just, you're not really taking too much weight on it. You're just trying to roll over onto the ball and the ball will kind of like create a pressure wave around so you're really just coming from here and rolling across that section there and we're just going to go back and forth across the tissue on the outside of the quad should it be quite a lot on the front of your leg rory yeah so it's it's more on the front outside right okay, okay. so if you start off on that if you start off with your, your foot on its side effectively in that side plank yeah. position and then if you start to roll across So you're sort of starting on the IT band and then moving across mm -hmm. onto the quad itself. And you want to do a few rotations in one position until that kind of frees off and then move the ball up two centimeters or so and then go again. And if you want to add more pressure, you can kind of take your hip off the ground or if you want to decrease the pressure, leave your hip on the ground and just roll across it. And if you find a particularly tight spot, like right there, <laughs> You can just kind of camp out there for a second or two and just kind of like push into it really gently and just try and relax and let the ball push through the muscle so that you're kind of trying to push the side of your quad through across to the front of your quad. No, no, that's off. So something that'd be really good to do if you're going to do the uh, squat challenge next week is to get a photo from the side of your passive squat. So just like chilling at the bottom of the squat as if you would if you were going to sit around a campfire doing it. Um, and then your active squat, so the bottom of your air squat position. Get a photo of them before and then take a photo of them at the end of the week and see if you can see any noticeable improvement. Um, a nice way to do that is to squat facing the wall in that squat therapy style and just see what sort of position you can get into and just see if you can leverage some better positions across the seven days. Because chances are you might get a good improvement in 
the position of your hips, like a, a much better lower back position, or and or getting a better position with the ankles and being able to send the knees forward and out more. No. And you can roll quite far forward, through on this one. So coming from the side of the hip all the way through onto the front of the quad and then back through again. And really just work up until you get to the point where you get up to the bony section up here and then just start to work your way back down if you've got the time. Um, we're going to stop there on that side. And we're going to move to the other side. So we're on two minutes on one. We'll do two minutes on the other. So again, starting from about halfway up the quad. And then we'll just work side to side across that tissue all the way up until we get up towards the hip. All right. Ooh. Luke, you got in the cross country skis again at all? <laughs> Sorry, we muted ourselves because Lucy's making funny noises. <laughs> uh, no, I haven't, but I've, uh, I've been letting the touring set up now, so I actually want to get up the hill. Oh, nice. Yes. Has anybody been up the hill? Do you know what the road is like these days? Uh, I, I was all right. last week. But yeah, I know. Sure. I mean, I know it was all right, kind of end of last week. Just wondering about if it's, you know, it's been a little bit milder, I guess. Yeah, I think Maybe he got re recovered. Uh, you can still. You it's can... snowing like a, you know, snowing like mad here now. So oh, really? tomorrow. Yeah. You can you can still skin up to the car park. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's pretty horrible coming down as you can imagine yeah. but actually, actually above that it's actually really nice soft snow uh, today um, quite powdery well Scottish powdery snow um, <laughs> in, in the little gullies and stuff yeah. um, so it's really yeah it's pretty nice to get some wee top up yeah. I'll try to get out on Friday yeah I'm going to go again this week May well see you running up the uh, running up the ski road. Yeah, yeah, run it. There you go. Need to start increasing the vert, but everything's everything's powder everywhere. Yeah. There's white stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's what those cross country skis are for, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> I'm actually good at skiing uphill. If you find the really tight spots in the quad that feel particularly rank, like if you try tightening the quads, so like tensing the muscle and then relaxing it against it a little bit, it can be quite a nice way of easing that off. So tense the muscle and then just relax against it a little bit more. All right, we'll come up out of that one. Um, another one we use quite often, actually, just in warm ups and just getting mobilized, is getting into sort of single leg flexion with an external rotation. So we're going to start off coming forward with our left leg into lunge there. And from there, we're just going to try and get that leg as far forward as we can. Okay. So we're really trying to drive our hip towards that heel and kick that knee right forward over the toes. And then from there, we are going to drive the knee out to the side. So we're going to push it away from us. And we're going to try and drive our chest through. And we're going to try and come down into this bottom position here. Elbows on the floor. So from the front, <laughs> knee out to the side. <laughs> and right down into here. And elbows to the ground or as close as you can get to that. I find sometimes walking my hands really far in front helps to get into a lower position whilst in and sort of whilst trying to keep your back nice and long and flat <laughs> so we're going to camp out there first just coming down getting our chest through that gap between our legs all 
And you don't have to stay totally static here. You can kind of rock back and forth, move the hips side to side. See if you can find any more freedom there by just moving a little bit. And then from there, if you place your left hand on your left ankle and then push the elbow into the knee and then try and come down with the chest. So driving that knee out to the side with the elbow. Well. <laughs> Some of you might feel a bit of a stretch in the inside of the thigh there. So that's the adductor. Yeah. So this portion in here, basically between the knee and the hip on the inside. We're going to get onto a little bit of work on that in a minute, but that's one of the areas that can sometimes restrict your ability to get the knees pushed out in a squat. Mm -hmm. And once you've pushed that knee out for a little bit, again, just try and bring that chest down towards the ground. See if you can get elbows down this time. And then from there, we're going to move our chest as far away from that knee as possible. So we're going to try and reach our chest is away from that left knee all the way over to the right and then push into the knee at the same time. You might feel a bit of a stretch through the outside of the abdomen here. And then we'll just come back to center again. Oh. <laughs> And then slowly from there, we're just going to rock back, keeping that foot on the ground. We're going to rock back on our heel until that front left leg is sitting right out in front of us. And just get a gentle hamstring stretch there if we sit on our rear heel. A little bit of a stretch in there. And then we'll come up. Okay, and we're going to swap over to the other side. We'll do two minutes on the other side. So we're going to step forward with our right foot. And just, again, driving those hips forward, trying to get that knee right out over the toes. And then bring ourselves down in between the legs and try and get elbows down to the ground. If we can, otherwise, just reach your hands forward. Arms aren't long enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the problem is, Chris. Yeah. You're right. It's, uh, it's really common, that is. Um, get as low as you can in that one um, and just try and sink down and just nice big breath in and as you breathe out just try and sink a little bit lower and make sure you haven't got that front foot right in front of your rear knee you don't want to be on a tight rope you want to create a little bit of space so the gap between your feet is kind of roughly what you would look for in like a sort of hip width stance you want to create enough space there that you can drop your chest down through and towards the ground. And from there, we're just going to grab onto the ankle, push the elbow into the knee, and drive it out to the side and try and get a stretch on the inside of that thigh. I'm just pushing our belly button towards our front heel. And then from there, elbows down to the ground. See if you can get a little bit closer this time. And then once you've done elbows down to the ground, we'll just come away from your knee. So try to get your chest as far away from the knee as you can. Support yourself on your left hand and push your right hand into the knee, driving it out. And 
And then we'll come back to center again. And then again, just coming down onto our elbows. Hopefully feeling a little bit easier to get down there now. Mm -hmm. And from there, we just sit back on our heel. Get a little bit of a stretch through the hamstring on the lead leg. All right, nice work, guys. So we are going to finish off with getting into those adductors. So I mentioned just the inside of the leg from knee up to upper inner thigh. Um, we're going to use ball in there. Now, if you've got lacrosse ball, it's a really good one. Um, I've also got this larger ball here, which is kind of useful for that because it's a little bit further off the ground. Or if you want, you can pop your ball up on an ab mat or something like that just to get a little bit further off the ground. But essentially, all we're going to do is place the ball down, put the leg out to the side. So my rear leg or my right leg is trailing behind me. And then I'm just putting the knee out to the side to get some pressure on there. And I'm going to open the hips up. So I'm lying, trying to get my hips down onto the ground. And then I've just got the ball sitting under the inside of the knee there. Okay, so just a little above the knee and just getting some pressure on there. That might be enough. You might feel that's, an, that's enough pressure for you. If that feels like you could do a little bit more, you can lift the foot off the ground. You can also take the leg through flexion and extension and just work through there. Okay, and we'll move a little bit up and just try and work through those adductors. You can do this with a foam roller as well. It's a little less pressure um, if you've got one of those. But we're essentially just, as you're going there, working away up the leg, just going across that tissue there and just keep weaving across it all the way from the knee up the leg. Okay, so we're just gonna do two minutes in there. Did anyone manage to keep up their work on the couch stretch from last week? A little bit. A little bit, nice work. Yeah, it was sore. <laughs> Ow. Again, if you find a really tight spot, just try and squeeze the muscle against it a little bit and then just relax onto it. I find if you like kind of plant the toe a little bit, you can kind of squeeze in that adductor and then relax the ball down through the tissue. And then from there, just start to roll again. All right, guys, we'll swap sides. <laughs> Oh, that's rancid. Yeah, some some one side might be a little bit worse than the other. <laughs> and if you find that sort of really tight spot that actually you just you instinctually don't want to roll over it, that's totally fine. Just camp out there a little bit until it eases off. So just let the pressure of your leg sitting on that ball kind of sink her into it. You chill out there. Takes a nice big big deep breath. <laughs> And just try and imagine that like 
ball just sort of sinking through the muscle like hot bar. That's the that's the mental <laughs> image to have. <laughs> Water bottle works good too. Yeah, water bottle works good. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, sig bottle or something like that would be pretty decent for this. Mm-hmm. And then once you've kind of let it relax a little bit and it's sinking in a little bit, you can try tensing the muscle against it and then releasing. And it's a weird one to tense that muscle, but it does work. Mm-hmm. And if you're anything like me, you can feel that pulling right down across your knee, which is never a good sign. It probably means the tissue's getting a little bit too tight for your knee. So it's a good one to ease off for that matter. So, Polly, do you feel like you're starting to come to terms with some burpees now? You've kind of like made a truce with them now that we've done so many burpees this week. No. No? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I think I've just reached a point where I'm like, I've accepted I'm slow and that they're never going to be quick. Then you just have to grind your way through them. I, uh, I, think, I think you can get faster at them. I believe it. I believe it. We've got a bit of accessory <laughs> work. I think, oh, have we got it this week? I can't remember if I, I think I've done the squat version of it this week. Um, but basically just trying to work on some speed work for the for the burpees. Mm-hmm. Um, so doing like small numbers, but in intervals, so you can kind of like try and go fast at them. Oh, joy. <laughs> <laughs> for the burpees, would the L-sit, Bye. would strengthening the L-sit like help with the burpees, like getting your feet up underneath closer to your hands when you're getting up? Oh, for sure. Like having the mobility and also the strength to kind of pull yourself back into a, a flat footed forward fold position is really, really useful. Um, and like, I, I definitely take a slightly wider stance in the burpee to try and make that happen. Uh, so I can just come back up feet straight underneath the hands. You're not kind of like stumbling to get back up onto your feet or anything. It definitely helps a lot. That's not like, what I got... always the stub in the toes you're stubbing the toes and not getting them underneath you for me. Yeah. So for sure, like the thing that I do quite a lot is try and think about from that bottom position, like getting straight back to here. And it's more of like a sort of gorilla stance, but it means I can go straight from like hands right where the feet are with flat feet and be straight through that position. It really, really helps. Um, I did a workout with 108 burpees the other day. So I've been getting burpees in this week. Mm. Um, <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to finish off with the two minutes in the bottom of a squat again, just to see if we can find any difference there. See if any of those areas have helped to get us into a better position. So we will get into the bottom of our squat and we will start in three, two, one. Let's do it. So for me, immediately, I've got less pinching in the front of the hip, which is nice. It kind of feels like I'm getting my body through my legs a little bit more, which is a good thing to happen. And that's the thing across the seven days of doing the squat challenge is just to try and like find those, find those sort of little niggles in the squat and try and iron them out by just spending more time in them or trying to mobilize those positions. And we've kind of gone over some good mobilizations you can use today to help with the hip flexion and the external rotation of the hip. We haven't gone over so much ankle stuff this week, um, but we'll go over some of that next week to try and help with the squat challenge. And just spend some time down there and kind of get to know your squat a little bit more, like what's sticking where and how you can kind of try and help it. Anyone feeling a little bit easier in the bottom of their squat today? Yeah, definitely. It was much better. Oh, awesome. Some of us have a longer road to go to get our squat feeling like really comfortable, um, but uh, but it'll it'll come. It also just makes like hitting depth in air squats and stuff so much easier. 
like if it if you're not fighting your tissue and your hips and your ankles to try and get into depth you can just kind of hit it get straight back out of there it makes life a lot easier but also also help with your burpees rich yeah i'd take really tight hips yeah Nice work, guys. That's two minutes. Easy. <laughs> awesome work, guys. So if you found any of those particularly useful um, that were that sort of like felt either like they hurt a lot or they weren't particularly nice, um, then they're probably the ones to spend some more time on. Um, if you found that one of the things that was holding you back in that squat test was really the, the ankles, then we'll look at some more ankle stuff Um coming up on next Wednesday. Um, so you can kind of work on those as part of your uh, squat challenge and try and get into better positions there. But just spending time in the bottom of the squat is going to help that massively because one of the best mobilizations we can do for the ankle is just getting it into that end range flexion and just kind of spending time there. Um, so again, if you want to do single leg and just spending some time putting some weight over like your chest onto there, let the heel lift up a tiny bit and just try and press through and just trying to get that knee inside and outside it's going to be a great way of just working on the mobilization for that ankle um and then from i think it's from sunday yeah i think it's from sun ellie is the squat challenge starting on sunday start on monday so from monday to sunday just uh clock up as many minutes as you can in the bottom of a squat keep a keep a log of them um in a note on your phone or something like that and then we'll have a workout in beyond the whiteboard on Sunday for max minutes in the bottom of a squat across a week and you can log it in there. That is the plan. All right, guys, have an awesome evening. Good to see you all. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks so much, Rory, guys. Yeah, thanks, cool.